Welcome to this episode of our program Daily Debate. As usual, we will be discussing a very contentious debate. Today we'll be speaking about how Egypt uh, dealt with the situation or with the educational uh, system during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. And um, Egypt has succeeded in presenting a good model on how to continue its educational year amid the unprecedented circumstances due to the spread of the coronavirus pandemic through integrated plans and means of e-learning in order to help students to safely pass the unprecedented uh, stage rather in which the whole world was facing. The traditional education system has been put on hold to deal with the spread of the pandemic and the country has depended on technological means in the current academic year in schools and universities. The head of the coronavirus management crisis committee said Egypt has succeeded in dealing with the virus through tackling the final year of the secondary school, rather Amma, and that the country has proved to have good infrastructure and promoted technology. Definitely some of the uh, of the programs and plans have been put and uh, conditions and measures have been put in order to make a safe haven for students when they go to uh, their exams. Uh, also during the year there have been many stages that uh, the students have been passing by uh, through e-learning, through uh, meetings, um, through uh, many um, meetings online, Zoom uh, and other, um, other areas of meetings. These issues were very essential and helped the students go on with their educational system. Today we'll be speaking about the educational uh, uh, system, particularly this year and what has went out and how Egypt managed to uh, go through this or pass. Uh, this uh, very, very critical uh, stage. Before we delve into our discussion, let's first have a quick look on the uh, top stories of the day. And President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi witnessed the inauguration of the industrial city in Rubeki region affiliated to Bedr city. During the inspection of the city, President Sisi said good administration is the path to success the continuation of the industrial complex and to any developmental or industrial system. He said the first reason for the deterioration of the weaving industry during the past years lies in bad administration. The head of state noted that all state institutions are witnessing a great leap, especially in the transportation projects, which he said is expected to cost 1.1 trillion pounds by 2024. President Sisi inspected the complex of the National Company of Industrial Development in Rubiki and witnessed the production phases in the thin weaving factory and the quality control lab in the facility. Meanwhile, President Sisi stressed that the precautionary measures must be strictly applied to face the spread of the coronavirus and stressed that citizens must not start to loosen measures after the numbers of infections started to decrease. Addressing the inaugural ceremony of the city, the head of the Armed Forces Engineering Authority, Abdel uh, Adel Al Far, said the political leadership attains a promising strategic vision. Al Far said that. This was evident in the implementation of a number of mega national projects in all fields, including the furniture city in Damietta and 13 other industrial regions across the Republic, in addition to roads and bridges. He said that the, the Rubeki uh, complex is a comprehensive facility specialized in all industries related to leather dyeing with best quality capabilities, and it's designed to produce expert standard goods at good prices. According to Alfar, the Rubik Industrial City includes production units and sub-services over the area of 511 Fidans and was implemented in cooperation with scores of national companies. For his part, head of the Armed Forces Projects Authority, Major General Mustafa Amin said that the weaving industry in Egypt has developed since the pharaonic era, but witnessed during the past years a number of challenges which led to a significant fallback of production and a number of companies loss hugely. He said that thus the National Company for Industrial Development in cooperation with the Armed Forces Engineering Authority established a joint industrial complex for weaving 
in Rubeki city. He said the move comes in line with the state's awareness of the importance of this industry in boosting the country's GDP and trade balance since the industry's export reached $3.3 billion in 2019. The industrial city, which extends from Cairo Smailia Desert Road to Cairo Suez Desert Road, was established over an area of more than 200 fidans and was reportedly designed to become the first world-class industrial city applying standardized industrial outputs. Officials said the best of management systems are to be applied in the industrial city to achieve the best means of preserve, rather to preserve control, capital and resources while at the same time reaching best quality production. The city's first phase includes weaving and textile factories and prints and drying factory. Right, welcome back. And in our uh, second top stories, and commenting on the so-called Grand uh, Renaissance Dam, the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam issue, uh, and while inaugurating the Rubiki uh, uh, projects, President Sisi reiterated that Ethiopia has the right to generate electricity on condition it does not harm Egypt's interests, stressing that Egypt sticks to the just causes of its stand in this issue. The head of state noted that fears of water scarcity must be met with increased water consumption control on the part of the citizens and strict measures against water pollution. Meanwhile, Minister of Water Resources of Sudan and Egypt expressed concern over the unilateral decision by Ethiopia to fill the dam, saying the move draws questions over the point behind negotiations. The statements were made during the second round of meeting, bringing together Cairo, Khartoum and Addis Ababa under the auspices of the African Union with the attendance of inspectors from the US and the EU. The meeting stressed the need to give the chance for the three parties to hold deliberations in light of the latest developments and within the framework of seeking settlement for hanging points. The three parties agreed to hold another meeting on the 3rd of August. Right, uh, getting back to our uh, topic of the day and before we move on with our uh, discussion, let's first have this quick report on Egypt to rely on e-learning next academic year amid COVID-19. Let's watch. The Supreme Council of Universities announced the time frames for the new academic year with the first semester to take place from the 17th of October 2020 until the 21st of January 2021. The Council added the second semester will be from the 20th of February to the 10th of June 2021. It also announced that schedules and measures to be taken in the new academic year due to the novel coronavirus pandemic. They agreed to conduct a skill assessment test for the final year of secondary school students, which will prepare them to enter colleges, to take place between the 8th and 20th of August. The Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research, Khaled Abdul Ghaffar, issued directives during the enlistment process for students wishing to enroll at Egyptian universities for the adherence to preventative measures against the coronavirus. The ministry will also apply a hybrid education system at uh, Egypt's uh, universities in the upcoming academic year to include both in-person and distance learning. This aims to reduce the number of students physically attending classes whilst also applying social distancing measures. The Science Up initiative will also tackle the council's meeting as the initiative aims to build a strong scientific environment in Egypt. This comes in addition to linking scientific research with the industrial sector. Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research reported about 446,528 seniors across 405 colleges are sitting this year's final exams across the country at 27 universities. Right, welcome back and uh, back to our uh, topic. Let me here welcome our uh, guest, engineer Yasin Shalen, lecturer and technical trainer. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You very much. And um, our topic today is about the, the uh, educational process. And how far do you think we were able, Egypt, 
were ab was able to succeed in continuing the current academic year in such very critical circumstances? Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, interviewing me in this uh, in LTV. Uh, first, we can say that, um, uh, of course, a coronavirus was a pandemic all over the world. Uh, Egypt, uh, we cannot say that Egypt was uh, so much aware about uh, e-learning, uh, e uh, not so much people using uh, internet uh, through education or even through their social life or even through their uh, um, practical work. Uh, but I think we, uh, we we had a good experience. Uh, we, we we passed. We we, we uh, um, I think we could uh, we, we we did pass uh, the pandemic by uh, applying the e-learning through many schools and university. Uh, from my own experience uh, through learning, um, I think um, so many students uh, were not able to use internet. Were not able to access. Uh, uh, online educational sources, online books, uh, even uh, sending assignments by email, sending using uh, uh, using email. Some many 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 students, if you ask him, just uh, give me your email in order to send you the assignment or to receive the assignments. Which email do you mean? Facebook, for example. It's, Facebook is not an email again. So uh, I think we had uh, we did pass uh, the the pandemic. Uh, this and we we did deal with uh, with this. Uh, uh, in a good way through uh, through the month uh, the, the the past month of the end of the coronavirus. Let me here speak about using technological methods that were not used before. We're speaking about e-learning. So e-learning was not something that is uh, easy for all students to uh, go over them, and uh, definitely the e-learning was something that needed preparations for the students, for the uh, uh, teachers, uh, training them both on how to uh, uh, cope with the situation. How far were we able to manage with such an issue during a very uh, small time? And I, I, I guess that we even uh, 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 were able to pass uh, uh, not just Sanawiya uh, Amma or, or, or what equals to that, but also other grades and other uh, levels. How do you think we were able to uh, go through that in such a very small time? I think we passed this, uh, this stage uh, during uh, the coronavirus, the three months, yeah. okay? Uh, many, many people, as I said, use the internet. Many people, most of people uh, use smartphones uh, all the time, you know, contact each other through Facebook, through WhatsApp and so on. Uh, but uh, e-learning, um, for example, some, many, many universities used to uh, send uh, their assignments and uh, attend some lectures uh, using the internet, using search uh, online uh, to apply, for example, uh, for their exams. Uh, some people for the postgraduates, even for the undergraduates, uh, used to deal with the internet uh, all over the time. But uh, the problem is that we faced during this uh, coronavirus pandemic is that uh, um, we met new challenges. We met a new challenges that some, some teachers uh, in many schools, uh, I think, didn't have the culture of using the internet or using online education. Many students face some problems uh, related to uh, the connection of the internet in some rural areas. Uh, in many places, uh, the instability of the internet connections in, in, in many places of Egypt. But I think we did it. Yeah, yeah. I think we did it. Let me tell you my own experience, because I have my own children who went through uh, some of the grades, and uh, one of, uh, of them was in, in grade 9, and the other uh, grade uh, 12, so we're speaking about different levels. And uh, the first one, uh, 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 they asked him for research to be sent online. Mm. And the second one uh, for many researchers. And then he went through even the, uh, some of the, uh, the tests. Let me, let me know, how did you view that? How, did this facilitate for the children? Uh, or, or was that a heavy burden on their shoulders because they, were, they did not understand? L let me take here, what's your take on that? Okay, let's state that, uh, you know, the, um, nowadays most of the education all over the world, uh, it's not only done through uh, exams, you know, okay, written exams, mm. okay? Many educations, if we, if we are talking about uh, the new uh, education experience that, uh, that we are looking here in Egypt, 
it, it may it may depends on uh, search online it may depends on submitting reports so whatever whether we are facing uh, corona or not uh, facing corona so all the time all students uh, they, they, they shouldn't uh, rely on just reading books and go and uh, maintain some uh, text and go and uh, you know and write mm -hmm. in the exam we should rely on research we should rely on search online I think this was a good uh, challenge that was uh, a good opportunity to try this uh, we should have tried before so many years before but it was it was difficult because are, are, are we speaking here about uh, opening a kind of uh, creativity or or, or um, innovative uh, way of thinking to students rather than just recording and just uh, 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 writing what they recorded and, and, and why, why was that new for the students and to which extent was that beneficial for the student himself? It was difficult because uh, we have just started during uh, developing the new education system that we have just for uh, two years for example or less than three mm -hmm. years that we have started to uh, depend or rely on uh, search, rely on uh, uh, expressing your uh, your opinion, for example, in some topic, and get search, and uh, and uh, uh, you got, you have to avoid plagiarism, for example. You have to uh, refer to citations. You have to how to uh, uh, write your, for example, uh, any, uh, uh, write your uh, your uh, your answer, write your research for uh, uh, for for what scientists said for uh, for an article, and uh, you know. How, how how did that benefit students? I mean here. Our students were always, you know, they study, they gather the information inside their, uh, their, their, or they put the information inside their own minds, and then they deliver. And that's it. After the test finishes, it's all finished, and they don't even remember right. what they studied, right? Yeah. So, how, from your point of view, was that, uh, or created a kind of creativity in the way they are thinking, and how is is that essential to be a model for other, not just during the pandemic uh, period, but rather in the next phase? Okay. I think that uh, accessing this ex experience through the pandemic, even the pandemic is over, uh, is over. I think it's, um, it, will be, it will facilitate uh, the, the application and the implementation of this uh, kind of education in the future. If we would need, for example, uh, two more years or three, five, six, seven, ten years in the future, I think this uh, pandemic and this experience through uh, the coronavirus will reduce the, the remaining years which we were, uh, we were waiting for to apply the new education and get people uh, used to this uh, new type of education. Yeah. So it was beneficial that uh, we have tried something new. We have been put in, forced the students and the teachers and the systems and the government and all the people so we have to start this uh, kind of education. Mm -hmm. um, definitely it's an, a worldwide issue and uh, we know that in response to school closures with has, which has been taking place all over the world, the UNESCO recommended the use of distance learning programs and, um, uh, and, and open educational applications and platforms in order to, uh, to, to, to reach uh, uh, learning remotely. And um, Egypt has went through the same process, applying some of those programs and applications. How far were we able to go through the same process and where did we succeed in applying those applications? What were the difficulties and challenges aside from the internet connection and, and, and this issue? Okay, uh, number one, the culture. You know, the culture mm. for the most students, you know, even when they, uh, they submit, you, you're talking about your, your kids in the school. Uh, some students rely, so it's a search, I will do it at home. It's a take-home exam, so I can solve the exam, no one see me, no one watch me. So I can uh, yeah, go through plagiarism, I can copy from my, uh, uh, my friend, I can make someone Not do really. it Not really, <laughs> I mean, they were collectively. Yeah. <laughs> Working in groups, yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Please go ahead. Uh, so uh, w one of the challenges is that uh, you know the, the, you know, the culture has to be changed immediately. At the same time, it was um, uh, it was also very difficult for us, for some lecturers, for yeah. some schools, in order how to testify if this, uh, for example, this assignment or this exam is plagiarized or not. 
So uh, some many 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 lecturers, many teachers didn't have this experience before in order to compare and uh, check and uh, verify if this uh, is the own work of the mm. students or it's being copied, uh, for example. So that's maybe some uh, uh, some students um, yeah, go through cheating and be passed. No one noted them. No one uh, did have the uh, the ability to check their work. Uh, they may they might have not uh, le uh, learned the, the, the right way. They might have get uh, the the correct information. They might have studied when they pass, for example, for the next years mm -hmm. uh, after the pandemic is over. I think uh, they might uh, miss uh, some information. So I think that was. But any 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 new uh, any new experience, even uh, outside the coronavirus, when the the Egyptian Ministry of Education applied the new system. So many people uh, said that it's okay, then the iPad, for example, that during the tablet, the tablet was not working, the what, and so ever. So uh, any new trial, a new experience uh, will face problems. Uh, the culture uh, will not change immediately uh, in a day or, uh, or more. So uh, uh, Yes, but, but that also does not require only the training of our students but also to train the teachers yes. because uh, it's, uh, it's a process where interaction between the students and their own teacher is uh, essential. So how far um, were we able to train the teachers to go through such processes um, um, during a very short time and, and, and how difficult was that? Okay, let's say that uh, if, you'd if you'd like or to say to that uh, we, we will have to train teachers uh, through the coronavirus in three months, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's unlogic, okay? Uh, we go through the process uh, by trial and error. We have learned through the, the error. We have, uh, for example, after some time, uh, we may note that some students may apply uh, the online class on Zoom application, for yeah. example, and he just go online and go to sleep. So by the time uh, for some universities, uh, uh, universities when they start the summer course for the, the, the apply, even in my workplace, uh, they made the students uh, just make a declaration and sign that uh, he will be asked to open, for example, the camera during the exam. We did have a uh, bad experience through this, that some, some other one was uh, uh, his friend. He, he brings his friend to answer uh, the exam or the discussion instead of him. Um, maybe you cannot uh, detect his voice. You don't know him in person, you know, yeah. the student or the teacher. And so we cannot say that we have learned 100% uh, this experience through this short time. But uh, we have uh, learned so many, uh, we had uh, so many uh, great experience in a very short time. Even if there was no coronavirus and you would like to train teachers, you know, through uh, this time, no, it would take much more time, maybe more than one year, more two years, or, or so maybe you, more. So you mean here the monitoring system of the, uh, the, 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 apply, uh, the application of such methods? Sure. And, and that requires us to go through training process? Sure, yes. Mm. Uh, um, let me here, before we continue on with uh, our uh, discussion, take this uh, report and the Supreme Council of Universities announces new academic year dates. Me, I, I really want to know the dates. Please, let's watch. Egypt is to rely on e-learning the next academic year amid COVID-19 coexistence. Several proposals have been put forward to develop e-learning technology for the upcoming 2020-2021 academic year. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli said the proposals aim to prevent students gathering at educational establishments and ensure a safe study with the COVID-19 coexistence plans put in place. Madbouli said that before the pandemic's onset, Egypt had started to put in place e-learning technologies, but that it has expanded it to distance learning systems once the global situation became more serious. He added that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi had also issued directives for the system to be expanded. The Prime Minister's comments came during a meeting with the Minister of Education, Tariq Shawi, Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research, Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, and the Minister of Communications and Information Technology, Amr Talat. During the meeting, Shawi said that his ministry has been investing in e-learning and distance learning capacities before the global health crisis, but that the coronavirus had significantly increased citizen acceptance of them. 
The minister noted that the Ministry of Education and significantly invested in infrastructure as well as digital contact and curricula. During the meeting, Shawi also reviewed a proposal for managing the new academic year. He explained that his ministry has a digital library containing English and Arabic system curricula for all stages of the education system from kindergarten to secondary school, adding that the Ministry of Education also has an educational platform and virtual classes to which 13.5 million students and 1.3 million teachers from schools all over the country have registered. He also explained that there is a possibility of conducting live broadcast lessons for students in grade 9 to grade 12. There are also plans for a special final review electronic platform for those grade 12 students who will be sitting their Sanawiyya exam. This will come in addition to students being able to undertake the exams electronically. Moreover, Shawi presented a proposal for the new academic year that would rely on a hybrid education system. This will integrate face-to-face -face teaching with distance learning, with students able to obtain the cognitive aspect and some skills through e-learning. For his part, Abdul Ghaffar pointed out that the hybrid education, considered a new model of learning, especially given the current health crisis, is widely used in several universities around the world. We're talking back, and uh, I guess we have with us over the phone Dr. Mustafa Zaid, education expert. Good evening to you, sir. Yes, hello, Mr. Zaid. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being, being with you tonight live on Nile TV. A great honor. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I am Mona. Mona, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mona. My mistake. I'm very sorry. Pleasure is all mine, sir. And if, he, if I may ask you here uh, of the e-learning uh, process and President Abdel Fattah Sisi has instructed to expand the e-learning and increase the internet capacity in this academic year. Uh, uh, why the e-learning is much uh, needed at this particular stage and in the coming stage from your point of view? Okay, thank you very much. It's a very important question, I think. Uh, I believe uh, online learning become uh, a fact, not futuristic uh, anymore. Not anymore. It's not a future, it's a present. And this future we are living now. Uh, speaking of myself as a teacher, we were at the beginning of this corona time, we were struggling uh, communicating with our students. You, you, to be honest, I missed my, uh, my board, I missed my class, I missed my office, you know, but we have to adapt with the new era and the new. Uh, the new trend, what we talk about, what my education, we were struggling to uh, transfer our feelings. You know, as a teacher, you, not, you are not just telling students what they have to do. You have to convince them. You have to convince your students by digital means, which is a huge challenge. We have to adapt. I think uh, it, now it's, it's a fact we are living in, uh, and, and we are very, very optimistic about the future of online learning because everything uh, in the future will be based on that online learning. Yes. What kind of plans put by the Ministry of Education and Higher Education in order to uh, continue with the e-learning uh, process? And what kind of coordination uh, will there be between or among the uh, ministries of education, higher education, scientific research? And, and, and definitely there will be other ministries involved like the um, like the information uh, ministry like um, other uh, institutions or, or educational institution to which extent will there be um, 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 coordination among those all those ministries all together and what kind of plans are put for this process to continue from your point of view well, from my point of view, I believe that collaboration is very important, uh, very important for the upcoming. Uh, everyone should be uh, ready and prepared for what is coming because uh, we need to expand our capacity. Uh, we need to support the researchers. We need to find lots of research available on uh, the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. It's very important for the young uh, generations and students and all researchers. I think everyone should be uh, behind this uh, 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 infrastructure to be, to be more uh, sustainable and uh, we can all depend on it. Mm -hmm. Sustainable. 
Yep. Here, uh, the Prime Minister has said that the government will establish a kind of solid technological infrastructure to develop the country's online education system during the academic year 2020-2021, that year, that coming year. So how far will the country, um, or how far do you think we will be able to, uh, to use the uh, needed tools and to train our uh, academics uh, or, or, or rather our teachers and trainers to uh, go through this method, especially that we are speaking just months ahead. Yes, I, I think based on our on, on my experience in online education mm. during uh, the beginning of Corona time, we we did well. I think we had. Uh, I think as we, we we did everything online, 100% virtually. Even uh, even the admin work we did it. Uh, grading, uh, teaching, uh, helping students as, as academic advisors, we did our job very well. I believe what we had uh, the, best, the, the first shock, uh, and we adapted adapt with it very well. So I believe the next uh, year will be uh, more, much easier, based on our experience in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mustafa Zaid, uh, education expert, we thank you so much for being with us. Back to you, Engineer uh, Shalene, and uh, what we were speaking about is uh, expanding the online education system. And that we have to work on because at least, at least it's a lesson or prevent the overcrowding, uh, the overcrowding uh, at the university campuses, particularly that we are not aware exactly what kind of challenges we will be meeting at this upcoming few months until we find vaccine and all this so how can that be done and how we prepare for that at this uh, very um, very limited time space what will be done excuse me no the question <laughs> right how do you think we can do that at a very limited time to prepare for uh, online education system in order to be able to um, avert an overcrowding uh, in universities and that how can we be able to do that in that limited time i think we already did in uh, through the past three months okay uh, through the coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, the next stage i think it would be easier much more easier because uh, we will release some students to go to the schools uh, at the Minister of Education, uh, Dr. Tarek stated that uh, starting all the primary, the junior school and the kindergarten uh, will go through the school, so we, have, we will have uh, some more space uh, available in the school to, av to avoid uh, crowdness in the classes and so on. Uh, so it would be, uh, if we have, uh, make it 100% for all stages of the education online, I think 70 or 80% would be online and 30% will go to the school uh, again so i uh, i think that uh, what's coming uh, in the next three months will be easier than what we have faced we already have the, have the experience itself now what of what we heard that uh, um, some people go for why not students would go to the universities and we start uh, living the um, the very normal life with uh, the measures the the appropriate measures taken for social distancing and attending the classes in the very normal way uh, um, and and others said why not uh, uh, taking the first semester at least online uh, how far do you think or, or or what's your take on both or which one is preferable at this particular time I think the decision of uh, going, uh, it's, it's a government decision, it's a Ministry of Health it decision, it's okay. Definitely. But I think if we, did, you know, if we didn't take the decision uh, to uh, open or go through the schools and universities, and we'll repeat uh, uh, this experience mm. of uh, online education, I think uh, it will be, uh, you know, less challenges, we'll face less challenges than the, the past term. I think we had the experience. I think even uh, if you are not... Uh, like to talk about the internet connection stability and so on, but I, I think we mm. had the experience. Uh, all the people, all the students, uh, have been used to use uh, this uh, kind of education. All the teachers. 
I think it's, it's you know, it's, it has been much more comfortable. You know, it's, uh, for example, some universities, we have, uh, have many branches in different places. Mm. And for me, for my experience, I had to, for example, uh, we had a branch of my workplace university in Alexandria, and another one in Port Said, for example, I used to travel every week for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for Port Said one or, or, or uh, once or, uh, or twice weekly to Cairo, for example. I think uh, the process made it easier, uh, less uh, cost, uh, uh, less uh, headache for the students. If you have many classes, it has been only one class, you know, online. Uh, it, uh, it, it was a very good uh, experience, for example, when you have many classes with different lecturers, uh, the students have the f flexibility to attend uh, the class with this lecture online, with this lecture online. It has been easier for less distance, uh, less time consuming, uh, uh, less uh, distance traveled, uh, you know. Uh. Right. Let me take it from the opinion of my own children. And um, when coronavirus started and they started working online and all this, they missed so much their friends and these gatherings because this is also a social life that gives motive sure. for the children to go on in their educational life. Uh, how do you think this um, can affect the students' uh, motivation for learning and, and, and for them to go on uh, their educational uh, process? And this social life they miss with their own uh, mates and, and colleagues and, and, and all this life, how far do you think this would reflect on the uh, students' um, or how they feel or how they will deal with the situation? Let's say that every experience, every trial has pros and cons, okay? So uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, distance learning, even all over the world, even if there's no pandemic, if there's no corona, uh, the lack of physical interaction between the lecturer and the students. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, the lack of uh, social interaction between uh, students everywhere. Um, but if we, we look from the other side, from uh, the, side, the, the, the point of view of health and the, the point of view in safety and of well-being, if you are uh, going to have the culture of avoiding uh, a virus, avoiding getting, you know, uh, getting infected with a virus, so if you will uh, be put in a, to decide or to select or uh, to choose whether to be, in, to be to, you, you would be put in a danger of an infection, a virus, or just you have to. Uh, accept the challenge for uh, some month and you stay at home we said we are you know it's not only for education all the clubs you know are closed even after the opening of some clubs for all example all the social life was all closed. social life is stopped not only education mm. at least education is going on uh, some uh, some people maybe for uh, doing sports online you know for uh, some but some cannot some for some sports cannot for my, my daughter for example so gymnastics in front of zoom uh, application mm -hmm. and, and, and she did through, yes, yes, so. seven, mm -hmm. uh, she's seven years old. But uh, you know, it's, uh, um, it's a world pandemic, it's, uh, everything is stopped, not only the education. Mm. So at least uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, lose a year uh, from uh, the life from, through education. Mm. They went through education, they did it, they can, uh, they learned, uh, you know, uh, uh, new challenges in education, uh, new ways of education. But, but see, when we are speaking, we, uh, we're speaking about different ages. Uh, in the first uh, few years of education, particularly the primary it's ones, difficult. there is a kind of face-to-face -face communication and interaction between the teacher, the, uh, the, the students and the classmates in order for them to learn. How far would that be compromised? I think uh, the government already compromised this by, uh, you know, when, when they mentioned that the Minister of uh, Education, the Minister of Higher Education, that uh, the junior school and the kindergarten will go uh, through classes and uh, through education, and even the, the first years in the universities, mm. not uh, the second, third, and fourth, and the final year. So I think uh, we did uh, have, uh, we did, uh, you know, have a 50 50 uh, solution to this situation by uh, applying uh, even uh, uh, junior schools and kindergarten to go to the school. It's okay. And, other, um, and as you mentioned... Could you even believe that kindergarten online would work? No. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. And that's why they opened the school for this stage. Mm -hmm. But with, uh, with white classes, because, you know, not all the school will be, 
uh, will be, or not all classes will be attending uh, the school. So we'll have some area for some distance, uh, uh, keeping distance between students, between classes, uh, uh, on sitting in the classes and so on. So it's, uh, I think it's okay. Mm. And they decided, the government decided that uh, the Ginter Garden Junior School will go to the school. It's a final decision, I think. How about, um I mean here that some has have the luxury of going through the internet methods and, and having a laptop and all that. How about different other uh, people living in different uh, standards of life and, and they don't have the ability to have a laptop or go through the online learning system and how will the government deal with this? That was the challenges, one of the most, uh, the major challenges that we met through this, uh, through this, uh, in online education through the pandemic, uh, Corona. Uh, it was very difficult, as I mentioned in the beginning uh, of this appointment, uh, the, the rural areas, uh, the unavailability of mm. some laptops, some computer. Uh, I think the, I mean, the government uh, would uh, make some, for example, online, li uh, online libraries available for students. Uh, maybe they have access to some. Uh, online libraries uh, in clubs, in, uh, in youth clubs and so on, uh, that uh, they have uh, to access uh, the online lectures. I think, I think they will have some solutions for the, for the next semester, the government itself. I'm not working in the government, so I don't know what they will do, but I think they will do this uh, uh, solution. Yeah. Definite, definitely, I'm, I'm just trying here to open up some uh, out-of-the-box um, solutions. So we can all together find, because, I mean, we all have children and we all have our children who are going to the next stage or next uh, curricular uh, year, academic year and all this. And if we're speaking about the pre-coronavirus uh, stages, and if I may open the file of education, from your point of view as a parent, what were the main problems of education even before the coronavirus pandemic and, and, and this stage? One of the difficulties and, uh, that uh, faced most parents and uh, most students, even when we started uh, the, new, uh, <coughs> the new online, uh, not the online, you said pre the, 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 the coronavirus pandemic, uh, even pre for this stage, yeah. uh, when we started the new uh, developments, uh, the new system of education yeah. and working through uh, you know, the tablet and the iPad, I think we, we faced so many challenges by using uh, the iPad, uh, by using, uh, going through new, uh, new ways of education. Uh, you go to have a search, uh, you go, uh, that's uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, you will not uh, just maintain and you know, expect some expected questions by the night, uh, the night before the exam and go through it. I think we have faced this, uh, we have faced, uh, this uh, challenge, we have faced these uh, difficulties. Uh, Pre to the coronavirus, you know, when, you, when we started the new uh, educational uh, development program. So uh, we already went through the challenge, but when I said, but when the coronavirus pandemic started, I think this facilitated uh, just make some boost for this uh, trial. So uh, just you are telling the people, uh, even if you don't want to try this, you, will, you might face some challenges that you have to try this. And if you said about luxuries, the internet is not a luxury. Yeah, and using smartphone now, nowadays is not a luxury. All people go through fa Facebook, go through WhatsApp, all people uh, use technology. And we have, uh, it's time to use technology in the right way, in order to search, uh, to education, not just to chat and go through uh, games and mm -hmm. so on. I guess it's also time for us to create a creative and innovative generation that we really need to build on and invest in their capabilities. <laughs> Unfortunately, my time is out. I have to end it here. Engineer Yassine Shalen, lecturer and technical trainer, we thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be another contentious debate and another colleague. Good night.